Hey, this is Tom Mitchell, the Highland Traveler. I'm in Kodachrome Basin State Park, backpacking into a spot. They just opened up two backcountry sites. As far as those rangers at the station knew, I'm the first person to go camp in there. I, they said there's nobody else that's scheduled it that they know of yet, and uh, I've got the place to myself. So I'm about three quarters of the way to my campsite, and uh, just to I'll pull in this trailer along. You've seen this trailer and just uh, going in. I've got about 65 pounds worth of gear on the trailer and some on my body on the, you know, my camera gear. I have water is the most of the weight. I've got uh, three full gallons of water. So, because there's no water in here and I'm staying two nights. It's really stormy today. Um, I'm, I'm getting rained on a little bit, but you know, it's all right, it's nice and cool. It's only about 50 degrees, so it's not 100. <laughs> and uh, tonight might be a wash photographing in here because the clouds, tomorrow night's supposed to be nice and beautiful and the Milky Way is what I'm here for. So stay tuned as I continue on the trail and, and go set up camp. Thanks for watching. There's a spire right over there, a pipe. I've already passed a few. Just gorgeous in here. It's starting to spit it rain again. Well, that was fun to come up. Did I mention this whole fat pack with the water weighs about 65 pounds? <laughs> it's actually not heavy on my body. It's heavy when you start pulling up stuff like that. The problem is Is I have to go down that so we'll see how this goes my camp should be right over there the trail is gonna go around that bend and back up that way and camp should just be right up there about another half a mile or so they said it was four miles I've gone just over two and a half and it couldn't can't be more than oh well it might be a mile up that way I'm not sure. I'm about an hour and 45 minutes into the into the hike. I've got a hot spot on one of my toes on the insides of um, my toe, the toe next to the big toe, forming a blister, which I really don't want to stop and take care of it being this close. I don't know why it's happening. I've not had issues with these boots, but I am wearing different socks than I usually wear. These are good merino wool socks, but you never know. Anyway, I'm gonna go down this hill and have fun. Um, see how this goes. <laughs> well, that wasn't that bad. Luckily, there was enough soft sand to the right and I was able to get traction in it. To the left, it was a little hard packed and I was gonna start slipping. Check out that spire. I didn't know that was in here. A lot of these aren't marked on the maps because they're not named. And I looked at Google Earth and didn't know that this was in here. I'm only about 50 yards from it. I think this is, because my camp is up this canyon, 
I don't think it's too much further up in here. If I can camp a mile from something I want to photograph, I will. Um, but my goal for this is to photograph the Milky Way coming up um, in the southeastern sky just about an hour before the moon rises. It's a waning moon, so it's getting smaller and smaller going to the new moon. It's the last quarter tonight, and my goal is to get the Milky Way coming up with one of these in the foreground lit. I brought my um, loom cube lights. They're a low, well, you can turn them all the way down to 1%. So uh, you, a very low, uh, low light. All right, I'm in BC2. Uh, two. This is where it goes over to BC1. And BC2 is just up the road, just a little, just up the trail a tiny bit. And there's that spire. So I'm not going to be far from it at all. Tomorrow's going to be explore day. Tonight I'm just going to set up camp and, and chill out and, and uh, find a spot to hopefully photograph the sunset. Though it probably ain't going to happen with all these clouds and storminess. So, and tomorrow it's going to be scouting, poking around, and finding a spot for, for sunset and uh, sunrise. Sunday morning and a spot for the Milky Way about a hundred maybe 200 yards up the trail BC2 backcountry campsite number two and then the trail continues around that way and goes back up there's a nice little spire right there on the back side of those trees not a, a total pipe but a cool spire that I that's a, maybe even better than the other one. That's, anyway, all right, go find my camps, go up this little trail and set up. Wow, look at this. This is right at the end of the campsite trail. So uh, there's no fire pit, no fires, so just anywhere in here that looks good. But this is the view. Um, I mean, literally, wow. <laughs> It's just gorgeous. They said this was some of the prettiest scenery in the park. I believe it. I mean, so looking at so the trail runs down here through the bottom. Um, uh, cool Cave is right back over in there. So I'm here. I just got to find a couple trees. That I can stretch my hammock across. I per, I asked the ranger if I could hammock camp he said yeah no problem I you know he said there's nothing in there but junipers and a few pinions and I'm like that's fine junipers are good strong trees as long as I can find two of them that are about 14 feet 15 you know four, well 15 16 feet apart work fine and and so this should be good so I'm gonna set up surprisingly I think I found a spot right at the end of the trail Right where I, right where the campsite is supposed to be. I mean, they said I could pit, pitch my hammock anywhere in the general area. Um, it's not as sheltered as I would like, but this whole this whole area is kind of just wind blown. I'd really like to be down off this hill, back towards the main trail, and I could go back over there. I don't think they would care if I pitched over there, but I'm going to try this out. Tonight's going to be the worst night. It's supposed to be pretty windy and chance of rain so as you see this is where the trail ends and looks out over this tree here and this tree here they're about 20 23 feet apart I've got plenty of length on my on my um, suspension strap so I've adjusted it right to about 10 foot I'll have to maybe tweak it just a little bit but I'm gonna hang my hammock here see how it goes
ay, ay, ay. <laughs> it's uh, like seven o'clock. I need some. I, I've got to make some dinner. Uh, it's the wind's been pretty nasty, blowing. It's this is taking me so long to set up my my hammock. Um, finding this spot, it's not. I probably should have gone further back towards the the trailhead, but. Uh, these trees worked um, it's not the perfect spot to put the tarp across but it worked I was able to put some of the tarp lines uh, attached to some bushes which really helped I had one gust of wind come up and actually pull one of the stakes out so I'm not in the like I was talking about being in a good sheltered spot I'm not in the best sheltered spot it's a nice view um, the storm is supposed to blow out later tonight Though there might still be some wind, so I'm in for a windy night. I did bring some earplugs. <laughs> uh, hopefully the tarp doesn't come up in the middle of the night, and you know, and I have to get up and stake it back down. This is the new my new Starlight hammock from from Superior Gear. I've got an underquilt protector on it. That's what that is. It's got a zipper nut bug net that you can fully remove if you want. I went ahead and left it on. I like having it on because it just helps, you know, there's ticks, it's just about tick season. I've got to really watch myself for ticks. It'll And it just helps keep a little bit warmer in there with the bug net on. Well, you'll notice a little bit less of the breeze coming in. This, I've got the tarp down all the way on both sides, as you can see. I'd like to do it in porch mode with the view looking out to the north there of that great canyon. But uh, maybe tomorrow, we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna make myself some food. It's about 45 degrees. It's kind of chilly in the wind. I'm gonna put on a jacket and <laughs> see, there goes the dust. Look at that dust blowing in through there. The sand just blowing. So I gotta find a spot. I can set up my camp stove and boil some water and make, me so make myself some dinner. So that's what's next. This wind is pretty bad. No, I'm not eating Mountain House. This is Backpacker's Pantry. This stuff is the fettuccine alfredo with chicken. It's actually really good. It's a bigger serving size than Mountain House. Um, it's like 700 calories. And I'm hungry and I need this. So, I'm going to eat. Oh, that wind is just blowing dust up in here. There's nothing I can nothing I can do about it I walked all the way back down to the trailhead which isn't that I mean to the main trail which isn't that far the whole area is just windswept it's just a not a great place to camp when it's windy so I'm making the best of it it should get better the wind should is supposed to die off tonight um, so yeah I'm gonna sit here and eat and uh, I'm checking the light it's clouds and the lights just not being good at all I may watch just a little bit more and see if the sun pops out at sunset and then then if not I'm going to bed. Just listen to an audiobook and, and read and uh, I mean, listen to the audiobook and, and just relax and go to sleep. So I'm gonna eat. Ah, oh, smells good. My smell's finally coming back after having had COVID. Yeah, that's good. It's the view from right by my camp. My camp is right over in there.
So I've had some dinner, just uh, over, looking over this beautiful scenery that's uh, just right off my camp. I mean, I'm like 50 feet from from my uh, hammock. So winds quit blowing. It looks like most of the storm is pushing through, I hope. I really don't want to be up all night long with the wind rattling the, the hammock. <laughs> oh, I got a stick on me. I did bring earplugs. I, I always bring earplugs when I go camping, uh, just in case, because there's nothing worse than just the wind blowing and rattling the hammock or the tent, and the tarp or the tent, and causing issues with you just being able to sleep. So earplugs help a ton. Um, sunset's not done anything. I'm, uh, I'm watching, but I don't think anything is gonna happen. The light in here is, is all pretty dead. Yeah, so, so this hike in here, according to all trails, I didn't start the app tracking me until less than a quarter of a mile in. And then I was like, oh, you know what? I ought to, to you know, track this. But it showed it was 3.1 miles. So it probably was about 3.25 in here. The ranger said it was four, but um, I, that was it wasn't four miles. I was glad that it was three miles. I don't know that I had it in me to go another mile. <laughs> yeah, the sunset's not uh, not doing a whole lot. You see that? Just I didn't think it was going to do much. The clouds were all too low, not not high and wispy enough. This this back up in here isn't bad, but it's not got a lot of spectacular color. And this isn't a sunset spot, this is a sunrise spot. So it's all, I'll be back out here in the morning. So <laughs> talk to you later. Good morning from Crowd Chrome Basin. <laughs> it's uh, it was a little bit of a rough night. The wind was blowing and just rattling stuff. It finally uh, let up and and um, really cleared out the storm by about two. I got up like three times to go to the bathroom. It's part of getting old. <laughs> it kind of sucks. Um, and got up. I don't know what time it was, probably about six, and I uh, went over and started photographing, photographed the sunrise. It wasn't spectacular. All the clouds had blown out, so there wasn't any great clouds, but it was uh, uh, some neat shots just down that, down that big canyon of the, of the different spires and stuff. So I think I'm pretty happy with the stuff that I got this morning. Um, took my drone f for a little flight out over the, out over the area. It uh, got down to 25 degrees last night. So daytime high yesterday, according to the th my thermometer, was 55. And, uh, and then it got down to 25 overnight. The weather report showed it was going to get down to 30. So 25 is pretty accurate, especially for the elevation right here. It, uh, it was nice and warm all night long. In fact, I was a little too warm at the beginning. It wasn't until early this morning, like 4 or 5, that that I actually needed to pull my top cold all the way up over top or around me. So anyway, yeah, this is a nice morning. I'm going to uh, go get some breakfast, make some breakfast, and and uh, take care of my feet. I've got some blisters on my on my toes. I don't know why. I've never had problems with that. It might be these new socks I'm wearing. <laughs> Here's my camp in the morning light. You can see how close I am to this edge. There, 
There's the edge right there. And all that beautiful scenery. I got some breakfast cooking. So this is my cart. I made this from a uh, $20 Walmart little aluminum cart and parts from an old lawn chair and the wheel and the uh, fender were the most expensive things. I paid 30 bucks for that fender. It's actually, lo it was longer. I cut it down and then um, the wheel, but it uh, worked pretty good. The harness is just a standard harness to pull a ice fishing sleigh from, I got it from Cabela's. I, they're not selling that exact harness anymore. So I did a video on how I made this. I'll put it up right there in the top right hand corner. And uh, you can see how I made this cart. You can see how I got two gallons of water strapped on here. I've gone through, actually I've probably gone through about two liters that's all i have left i drank almost all that yesterday and then refilled it and that's all i've got left of that and i've got another one and a half liter bottle like this on the other side that's just about empty so i've gone through um two almost yeah probably two liters almost two and a half So this is the view for more I just ate breakfast. Sitting on this old log and looking out over that beautiful scene. Then my tarp, my camp is right there. So you can see on my tarp, all the sand, the dust, it's just it's just covered in a, a fine uh, red dust. Um, I've got it all over everything. It just gets all over everything because the wind gets blowing and that fine dust just picks up and, and goes everywhere. So, yeah, this is the view as I almost trip over a guy wire. I did as I trip over a, a, guy, a line for my hammock for my tarp and pull out the stake. <laughs> Yep, this is the view. I mean, look at that, just right off the edge, straight down. Isn't that just gorgeous? There's a lot of cool stuff in here to photograph. So tonight, well this afternoon, I'm gonna walk back over onto this knoll right there. It's just right there. And I'm gonna look off of that, scout that. It's just around the other side of that is where that spire is. In fact, I can see the top of that one spire. It's just just down around it, just right by there. It's not far from here. So that's what I'm gonna to try to get the Milky Way over. I've thought about shooting down this, getting the Milky Way down this whole scene. Um, it would be cool, the Milky Way will come up right over there. That's looking south. And the Milky Way, first thing in, you know, when it first rises this time of year, is due south. Well, it, the core will come up in the south right there, and it'll stretch across to the east. It'll arc all across that um, area. And um, I've thought about shooting down this because I am looking from any of these little fin areas over here, which I, I was shooting from that one right there this morning. Um, I'm looking basically due east, uh, actually south, due south, sorry, because the sun came up right there. This time of year, the sun comes up almost due east. The problem with photographing this, uh, with the Milky Way over it is lighting it. So what I may do is go back up here and set up tonight right by that, right by that bigger tree. It's a little bit harder to get to, but on that, that thing right there on that ledge and set up and just after the sun goes down um just during you know just before uh, during blue hour before it gets too dark and get a shot across all this and then um that it will be lit you'll be able to see it it will have a, a light coming from it from behind from that way from behind the camera which will be lighting it nice so 
if I do something like that, then I will be blending them. I will put my tripod in that spot and photograph that and and then go back or just leave the tripod in the exact same spot and and then go back at one in the morning and just photograph this the same scene but with the milky way over it and then blend them so a blend is where you take two different pictures that you took from the exact same spot and you merge them together in photoshop so i may do that too well i've eaten my breakfast i gotta clean up my my stuff and and um, put my tent stake back and I'm gonna go poke around. On this sandstone edge my camp is right back over that way this is just a very short walk it took me less than five minutes to walk over onto this this is really cool All right, I'm poking around looking for perspectives of this spire, that thing. South is literally right about there. And so the Milky Way will come up in the southeast. So from this perspective, at about two o'clock, the Milky Way should, the, the core should be right about in that area. This is not a bad spot. It's right off the trail. The main trail is just right there. I could light it with my loom cube light from right behind this knoll right up by that tree so they wouldn't be in the picture. That's that's really doable. My worry is that it will um, not be high enough. We'll see. I'm gonna, this is, this is probably the best place and it's not that far from camp. I really want a cool foreground item like that to photograph to get the Milky Way over and properly let I love this dead tree behind me too <laughs> um, I love dead trees just that the, the bonsai looking stark trees but yeah I'm gonna poke around some more this is probably a spot I, I'm gonna do the trick is just remembering right where it is and it's just right next to that tree remembering where your locations are can always be tricky um, so you pick landmarks that you can walk to in the dark and say, oh, okay, that's where it is. This another spot I like. You see it right behind me. This dead tree also, and that right there is south. Um, it's not coming up due south. It's coming up south southeast, which worries me a little bit that it might not be right there. But if I wait until about two, it should be high enough that it's right over the top of that. So. Uh, you know, photographing the Milky Way is all about keeping your bearings, having a nap. Um, I use Sky Guide. I have a compass on my phone here, and I have really good natural uh, compass in me. I very rarely get turned around um, and don't know which direction things are. One way to tell in the daylight is where the shadows are. So you sh see the shadows right here off of that tree. So they're pointing west because it's still morning. Now, as the, as the sun moves further into the sky, then 
it will they will start to point north as it circles around in the northern hemisphere and the further north you get the further the sun is you know further south the sun is um but that's a, a really good way when i fly to or to a new area um which i do sometimes and i get you know my rental car and get drive out of the airport i like to know directions i'm not just i don't just rely on gps and one way i can recalibrate my brain is to look at the shadows the, off the street lights fence posts whatever and knowing what time of day it is i will know okay that shadow's pointing east i mean or west or north so yeah i know oh okay yeah it's two o'clock in the afternoon that shadow is pointing northeast and then i can I, I sometimes i have to just like calibrate my brain and think okay if i was in utah uh, the main mountain range is to the east so if i'm facing if i'm actually driving east then i'm headed towards those mountains north is to my left and i calibrate my brain and i all of a sudden things click into place <laughs> uh, here's the other one this actually is not far at all where you come from my campground trail to the main trail just a very short walk from that intersection and uh, this is this one's cool and i like the perspective to the south and southeast and the eastern sky i'd have to find the right perspective so that the core of the milky way is showing and not directly behind it but i like this this is cool and i've got some good wide open area in here
actually warmed up quite a bit. I think it's about 60 degrees, which they said it wasn't going to get that warm down here, but hey. <laughs> so this is that flute, that uh, Native American flute. It's, I believe, a Cheyenne style. It's in the key of C, uh, the key of A. There's the maker's mark. The guy that made it's an artist out of, um, I believe, out of Idaho. I bought it at the Nez Pierce Reservation. It's a really cool flute. I've had it for probably, well, I, I bought it when I was on my honeymoon with my wife coming on 12 years ago. So um, I don't play it that much. I need to play it more often and get better. But practice, I mean, that's how you get better at instruments is just practice and practice and practice. Uh, it takes about 10,000 hours of practice to get really good at something. And so when I started playing the drums back in junior high school, I played six, eight hours a day. And then I picked up the guitar a couple years later and and would play that much. And I mean, I think I hit that 10,000 hours on the drums by the time I was a senior in high school. <laughs> but I would just play all the time. I just love instruments. So when I saw this, I just had to get it. It's a really nice, nice flute and pitched in the key of A, which is really nice. A lot of them are not pitched and this one is actually tuned to pitch. So it's uh, fun to play. I figured I'd bring it along on this trip just to, just to enjoy it and get some practice in on it. So I'm gonna take a nap now. It's middle of the day, it's warming up. The wind's kind of kicked back up a little bit, but not bad. Just a few gusts here and there, but I'm gonna lay down and take a nap. <laughs> about I think it's about 6 30 quarter to 7 wind's been blowing pretty good though not as bad as yesterday there's been a bunch of clouds coming over they're all supposed to clear out here by about eight or so um, I hope that's what the weather forecast showed me on my Garmin and that's what it looked like when I was watching the weather before I came down here but I'm set up in this spot that I'm going to do this uh, dusk shot for the Milky Way blend. Let me show you this. So right now I've got a cover on my camera. Um, I have a lot of Peak Design gear. I really like it. Um, this cover is just fantastic for keeping dust and rain off. I'm going to put on my 14 millimeter lens because this is the shot right here that the Milky Way is going to be coming up right up over that, like that. Well, I'm making myself some dinner. It's just after seven o'clock. Um, I've got my camera set up. I'm just waiting to see what the sunset's gonna do in that, you know, across the, the park there. Um, I, I kind of half want to be over there still photographing, but the light's just not, it's just going to keep fading and fading and because there's a mountain here, it's going to um, go behind, well, it's gone behind it, uh, except for in a couple places and it's just, the light's going to get dimmer and dimmer across there.
So there's the the shot I'll probably use. I've taken it, probably use for my foreground blend. I don't want it to be too dark because the light will all go blue. And with the, I mean, I could fix that. But with the 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 sun had just gone down and there was still some nice glow on the rocks all across there, so this should be really good. So according to Sky Guide, the Milky Way. This, the core at one o'clock is going to be right there. It's going to be up and it's going to stretch across this way. It'll be in the full field of view of this lens. This is a 14 millimeter lens. So here's here's my Sky Sky Guide app. Sky Guide's a pretty cool app. Um, I like it. It's worked fine for me for years. I only need it and I only use it when I absolutely I'm not sure. Um, I, I what I primarily use it for is just to see where the moon's gonna be. <laughs> so watch if I if I speed this up. So there's two. Th here comes three o'clock, three thirty, and there's the moon. So the moon won't even be coming up until 4 and it's just a very last crescent you can see at that point the core of the Milky Way is going to be almost due south I, I think what I am going to do is get up at 1 because I usually have to go to the bathroom then anyway I come over and shoot this and then go back to bed and get up at uh, 3 and go shoot those others because then the Milky Way will be up far enough and I usually have to get up then anyway to go pee. So, <laughs> uh, it's old age sitting in. That's what the doctor told me. Um, so, you know, you got to just kind of plan what you're going to do and how you're going to do it and then I hope everything turns out for the best. The clouds have almost all gone away. So, I'm going to... Uh, go climb into bed I think it's like 8 o'clock I'm going to go hit the sack go to sleep so I can get some sleep in before I get up and, and have to and do some shooting in the middle of the night morning it's Sunday morning I think I got about six hours of sleep all told last night in uh, two hour increments went to bed about nine had to get get up at 11 to go to the bathroom and then my alarm went off at 1 or 1 30 I can't remember I'm still trying to wake up <laughs> and uh, I got up and went and photographed the spot got my uh, my second exposure the nighttime sky shot of the Milky Way over the whole park which was really cool right on the horizon just had come up you can see it just stretching all across there that's gonna be really neat and then I went back to bed until uh, 3 I think my alarm went off I had it set for 3 and I got up and came down here to this spire to this big spire it's right right almost where the trail to my campsite merges with the main trail and set up and photographed here let me show you so I was standing right in this perspective with my 14 millimeter lens which was about like this um, I'm not sure what the millimeter on this camera is I haven't looked but um, and the Milky Way core was right there stretching up across I think it turned out pretty cool. What I did with my lights, this is the the light, the loom cube light that I used. I have two of them. I just used the one. It's got barn doors that you can use to fan and direct the light. These are all magnetically clipped on there. I also put on a warming filter 
the warming number level four and under it and they're stacked and I'm not gonna be able to pull it off very easily is a diffuser so you don't want the light to be harsh you want it to be minimal dim um, and just like a diffuse just a soft diffuse light and then you use the barn doors to uh, adjust where the light will hit on the on the object so what I did was I set the light up behind that big rock up there and then I feathered the light so that it only lit up the tower it didn't get any light in the foreground that's what the barn doors are for so these loom cubes are really cool I bought this uh, two pack with all the filters and and different things there's uh, I mean all sorts of stuff for them I think it was like 300 bucks and they're really awesome you can you turn them on with that button and when it's on you press both of them down together and it will put it to one power that's the trick to this kind of photography you want to have really low power so then from one power you can bump it up in increments of one on uh, with the plus button there and I shot at like two so the trick to this kind of photography uh, is lighting the subject properly and with a low dim light that looks like about the light of this of the crescent moon coming up so it was pretty cool at this spot walking in by you know in the dark by yourself when there's nobody else around is always a little scary I had on my Garmin uh, turned on in case I slipped and fell or something I could hit SOS button but and it's it's different it's different at night you're you, you know everything looks different the flashlight only lights up the certain field of view and so when you start walking on rocks it's hard to tell where everything is and just a small little hill like climbing up to there to fix the light which I had to do probably three times just getting up this little ledge right here it was very difficult in the dark and there's a, a spot right there that I used as a foot hole you can see my footprint in it and I'd step up and then climb up and walk around and get over there but yeah, doing this stuff in the dark by yourself is is always interesting so I'm gonna go down to the next one and show you there So for this one, I came to the spot that I had determined literally right off the trail. I didn't even notice that in the dark. <laughs> I came off the trail in the dark and walked down the dry riverbed and the trail crosses right here. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I could have just stood up there and shot it, but um, I was able to follow my tracks right to where I, right, right to where I was. So there's the spire. The sun's coming up. I hope that's not blowing that out. So for this one, the core of the Milky Way was right over here and it just stretched across. I had this dead center when I tried to move it off center to, for better composition with that 14 millimeter lens. It, the distortion of the lens made it uh, angled and tilted. I didn't like that. I was fine having it dead center because the Milky Way running behind it really helped uh, lead your eye to it. And then what I did, and this is going to be rough because the sun is right there. But there's a that that dead tree right there. I climbed up this embankment and up those rocks, and right up by that dead tree is where I put the light. I I tried. I started with it down below behind the camera, and I didn't like it. I moved it up there was a pain in the butts going up that in the dark and there's one spot right at the end that's just really hard um, but I set it up there and feathered it across so the light was feathered across just starting at the base of the spire and going up and with that gel on it it just looked like a nice red glow from a from a just a rising or setting uh, you know last quarter of a moon so I really, really like how that one turned out. This one is probably gonna be my favorite. Um, it was a very clean composition. I, I will have to remove 
that dead tree that was right in the foreground out. I could see the silhouette of it. Um, but other than that, I'm not going to need to remove much. And uh, I, don't, I won't remove any of those other trees. That one just bugged me because it was sticking up. But the light, was, and either one of these was not in the picture. Just, uh, just feathered the light across so that it just started to pick up and just lit that like a, like the moon rising. So when I left here last night, it was probably 4.30, I think it was, and um, started walking back up to the camp. The moon, I, from this perspective, I couldn't see the moon coming up, and I don't believe it was affecting the Milky Way shots. I'll see uh, when I work on these. But when I got around back on the trail and started up, there came, the, there came that last, I mean, it was between the new moon and the last uh, quarter came rising up. It was really cool. Just a little bit of light. And that light, I, I sat and I looked at that light and it virtually matched the light that I had projected up onto these towers. So that, 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 that intensity of it, the dim, you know, the dimness. So you want to shoot really low light. Um, you, I could not see that light with my naked eye. I could see the bowl. If I looked up where the lamp was, I could see it, but I could not see the light uh, hitting the tower with my naked eye at one or two percent. I bumped it, I would bump it up to like 10 percent to adjust it and feather it and get it where I wanted it. And that took a couple tries. You got to look through the camera, see what you're getting. And then um, went back, it went back up there, bumped it back down to the setting I wanted, and then shot. So that's how you do a, a nightscape kind of photography where you want something in the foreground and you want to light it with a, a light that looks fairly natural um, you know that's just the low level lights one of the best ways to go I actually learned this trick from Royce Bear um, I don't really know him personally but we ran into each other in the middle of the night photographing one night and he came walking through the trees with the flashlight on and I said Hark who goes there and he's like uh me Royce Bear and I'm like hey man so nice to meet you <laughs> he's the king of nightscape photography uh if you follow nightscaper on uh, nightscaping uh, on Instagram that's his, he started that it's his site and he'll post his stuff on there but he's a really really nice guy and I bought his his ebook on uh, that, uh, that taught a lot about this kind of stuff. I already knew how to shoot night stuff. I had never really thought about using light. And having been a photographer that photographed people, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but I just, I didn't know some of the stuff was out there. And, and now I've got numerous lights that I can bump way down. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm gonna walk back up to camp. It's about eight o'clock. I. Uh, I'm headed to Page, Arizona, and I don't need to check in there until like 2 or 3, so I've got a lot of time to kill. I'm going to um, go back up to camp and make myself some breakfast and, and just enjoy the, the morning and then load everything up and, and hike out, get back to the car probably around 11, and, um, and then head south. So I'll show you all these photographs that I took on this trip, the day and the night stuff here at the end, just to some nice music. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and happy trails.
had to go down that. <laughs> so my camp was right up in that area. Right up at, yeah, I think it, it was right there. Yep. I've come out about, about a mile. I have a couple more to go. It's gorgeous. These up and downs are killing me. Stuff like this. At least I don't have any more big uphills. I'm losing elevation the whole time now. I'm gonna attempt this with one hand. And I hit a rock. I wish you could see my shadow. <laughs> Mind you, my pack. What's it called? Oh, great. I picked up a stick. Look at that. I got a branch wedged in the wheel. Well, that's a nice break. <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> There's the hill. And I was about halfway down it and a big old branch got stuck in the spoke. And uh, I had to take the pack off to get it out and then I just wheelbarrowed this thing down. The way, part of the reason I build it like this is you can just use these handles and just roll, use it like a wheelbarrow. Kind of cool. I also left the kickstand on so that you can do just that. Look at that. It's totally standing on its own. I uh, hope no more branches get stuck in there. <laughs>